It is not unusual to see commenters from America wondering why UKIP do not do better in elections. This sentiment is often accompanied by dire warnings of Muslim invaders, apparently completely unaware of the history relating to immigration and the British Empire, or expressions that somehow UKIP is connected with Trump, or both, or that somehow not voting UKIP is an expression of a lack of patriotism. What these commenters fail to appreciate is that UKIP is rather a conundrum. For instance, the other day Nigel Farage, who is seen by many as the embodiment of UKIP, addressed the CPAC conference, link below. Yet if one looks at the electoral map of the last general election, link below, UKIP came second in 120 seats and in many of the seats they were second to the Tories. Therefore, it might be reasonable to assume that UKIP are a right-wing party, and it makes perfect sense for Mr Farage to address the CPAC conference. Yet if this were true, it doesn't explain the media trend of focusing on UKIP when it stands in traditional Labour seats, or why UKIP is the second party in a large number of Labour seats and indeed Lib Dems, such as the recent by-election in Stoke or in places such as Rotherham, link below, or why Labour become so unhinged in their opposition to UKIP in such places, link below. After all, if UKIP are a right-wing party, and according to some a racist party, link below, then why should Labour or the Lib Dems or the Greens or indeed the Tories care? And in the wake of the Stoke result, the Chatterati are out declaring UKIP finished, link below, in much the same way as they are declaring the death of Labour, link below. The problem with ringing of the death knells is that it overlooks a, rather, a number of rather important things about the Stoke election with regard to UKIP. The first and most obvious being Mr Nuttall himself. In the guerrilla warfare between UKIP and the Labour Party, one of the constant salvos fired by the Labour Party is that UKIP are outsiders. Perhaps the most famous example was Sarah Champion, link below. We needn't get into the weeds surrounding this issue since the whole point of it is to derail any conversation into a game of claim and counterclaim as to who is and who is not a local. Then we come to the business about Hillsborough, link below which is one of the more disingenuous rows of recent political history. Fine, it did the job of forcing Mr Nuttall to say sorry. But anyone with half a brain knows why Mr Nuttall made that statement on his website, what he meant by it, and why whoever chose to highlight it should be thoroughly ashamed of themselves. Mr Nuttall is a Liverpool fan. You might not like his politics, but unless you are going to argue that only those directly connected to those who died at Hillsborough have a right to claim they lost close friends, then you may as well cancel all commemorations, start buying the sun again, and not bother to consider that there, for the grace of God, go you. And during the election campaign I found myself wondering why Mr Nuttall was constantly being interviewed in a boxing gym by the BBC. But leaving all that aside, the real question is why he stood in the first place. Why not just allow Mick Harold, link below, who stood in the general election of 2015 to stand? But uh, not that any of this is new with regard to UKIP. One need only go back to the days of Robert Kilroy's silk to see the same process in action. 
Aaron Banks is apparently fed up with it, link below, and is apparently seeking to rectify the situation. However, while he and UKIP are doing this, they might also consider outlining their policies. Because one of the biggest issues with the party is that beside the EU and maybe immigration and maybe being the party of general discontent or protest on all sides of the political spectrum, it's never entirely clear what their policies are. Which ultimately is the real problem and the one that the Yanks commenting on the internet appear not to have grasped.